So we'll talk about like, you know, understanding mobile game players. That the most important thing what I feel is about in the game industry. So a lot of people have like a lot of games, cool games, very cool games, but you know, we never understand how, you know, our user react, you know, they navigate about their games. So we will talk about that. So first of all, I introduced my company, Game District. We build mobile games, uh, which trends on Google Play and Android Store. A little bit more about us. Uh, we have achieved like uh, 230 plus million downloads in the last two years. We are one of the biggest game studios in Pakistan. And 5.6 million unique active users, 300 games till date, 100 people around the world. Uh, so we kind of believe in this statement a lot. So it takes a lot of hard work to create really simple things. And so about the mobile games, I will start with like, you know, in 2016, we get to understand that, you know, that mobile game uh, users are going to take around the world and it's, you know, taking around for uh, PC and, and console gaming. And in 2021, mobile game is going to be like really big, 59% of the market. And you know, if we see that, you know, there are users from China, 37% billion market total, and we have like US, like 30 billion market share of the mobile games. And you know, we see the dif different segment seg uh, segmentation of the world. We have like very different kind of approaches. So if we see about the 51% of the market, which is mobile, uh, they have like tablet games and smartphone games. It is going, it, in, in the last 2018, it's a $70 billion market. So the problem with the mobile games is like, you know, there, there are different age segment, different gender segment, and you know, we, are, we don't know now what we, game, what, what we develop game for which people and you know, how we can you know, help them out. So basically, you, uh, at the first, there are like two categories of the games, like hardcore and casual. Now we are getting into the more details, like hyper casual, mid core, and l like a lot of stuff. Uh, so the behaviors of the players are like really different. If you if we talk about the casual games, we have like really cartoony graphics, really cute games, casual, and a lot of things. We talk about the hardcore, they're real, realistic, dark palettes, you know, violent, blood. So that used to be like really two segmentive segmentation of the games we used to have like casual and hardcore. And if we talk about the uh, players' regions, so North America has the 79% of the population have smartphones. Then Japan, then in South Korea and Taiwan, Taiwan came in terms of the smartphone owners in the, in the world. The solution, uh, the solution we, we, we usually uh, always do before we start any game is the user persona. So what we do is we, we generally uh, find a one user which, for which we, we are developing our game. So how we do that, there's a user persona chart around the world, you can you know, search it on Google and you'll find it. And you, Operate, you know, you, you just fill it by yourself. That what is the name of the, the guy? What is his age? What, it, it's it's a design thinking process, and it, it's really helped us a lot to getting a lot of downloads, right user acquisition, very right uh, people we, we we are targeting, and those, you know, uh, users get us a lot of money. Uh, so look, at, look into the mobile game players. So we have segmented a lot of uh, mobile games into two uh, product positioning from social and passion. So we believe that you know, there, there is only two things which mobile game users have. Like either they are socially very high, socially very low, they have a lot of passion about the game and they don't have a passion about the game, still they are playing. So we have segmented five uh, uh, players uh, segmented around the, uh, around the world and we will you know, take a uh, look on that. So there, there is called the effective players. So they are, they are the biggest and you know, they spend the most money on the games. So these people, we always wanted to find it. So what they do is they are 56% on Android, 44% on Apple. Their retention rates are really high even into the six months. They, they usually play a lot of games. Growth rates are amazing. Their age varies from 24 to 46. Population of the game mobile market is 15%. The daily game play a lot of, 69% of the users play game daily. On, on this segmentation. Their gender is 56% of you know, male audience. They are really high in terms of social. They are very passionate about games. They are very high spender of the games. They are based 40% in Japan, 16% of in Korea, 12% in US. So just imagine if, you, if you're creating something for this, how important the Japanese market are for them. 
you have to like translate really, really good in terms when, when because you, they spend the most in terms of games. The three way of discovering uh, for them games is like online forum, like official website of the developers and they do a lot of, they see a lot of uh, repetition of the developers. Like Supercell uh, comes, so these guys, all effective players, you know, just because of they have like really, really big repetition, they just go to the game and you just, just download it. Top three reasons to download, their friends are playing, recommended by friends and family, videos in the app store and description. The top three reasons to play, connecting with the family, challenge my family member, and get a adrenaline rush description. So we will talk about uh, the playful seeker. I'm just trying to be a little quick because we have a short of time. So the playful seeker is like, you know, 71% of this audience is based in, uh, they have Android devices and 29 have like uh, iOS. Their retention rate is quite good. Growth rate is uh, good. Their age is between 24 and 46. Population is 25% of the all mobile game, game users are like playful seeker. We just named it by ourselves. You can, you know, call it like any, anything you want. So they play, 66% of the people play daily. The gender is, again, 56% of, of this genre is, you know, male. They're like low social, high passionate, and they spend good amount of money on the in-app purchases. They are based in Korea, Russia, and Japan. This is the biggest market of the playful seekers. Uh, again, um, the top three ways of discovering these games, their official website and uh, developers, demo videos, online forums. Top three reasons to download these games, the file size, the game icon, and the game graphics. They're like really, really into this, all this stuff. Top three, three reasons to play for them to, to get an adrenaline rush and everything like that. Again, sense of achievement satisfy the urge to play. So with this, you know, we get into the third segment of the game players, which is like influence player. They are 70% on Android devices and 25% on Apple. They're, you can see their great growth rates goes really up because they get influence like really much from any, anyone, anywhere in the world. Their growth rates is also great at the start, age vary from 25 to 46. And they have like 12% of the population around the mobile game users. The 66% of these uh, people are like female and you know, they daily play, 46% of the players play daily. And if you see that, you know, well, what about their social expect? They, they are like quite social, not like really, really social. They're okay in, in terms of passion and you know, but they spend, they don't spend a lot of money on their games. So the biggest audience for them is like US, then China and Russia are the biggest audience for these kind of games. And their top three ways to discovering is just because their friends are playing, seeing someone playing, or just a viral video, like colors were just went viral. So they fall in, into that, that kind of category. Top three is to download, seeing someone to play, user review, art, they just like it. Or they just you know, want to test their knowledge, make progress, make reward their self. The other segment we are talking about is the followed player. Is the 64% audience is, is, is based in Android. Then we, they have like 36% use Apple devices. The retention rates are like really low in terms of the followed player. The growth rate is like also like very normal. You just make a lot of games to you know, get them have, you know, playing around. The age segment is 24, 25 to 46. Population is like 21% of the users are based uh, they, on, on, on population daily play. They play 69% of the users play that game daily and they have like again really big female audience in, in terms of game playing. They are like really high social, that's why they just followed a lot of people which are playing, but they are not very passionate about gaming and they are like really low spenders. And you know, they're the biggest audience is again US, they have like Great Britain and then France is their third audience. The top three ways of discovering, because the friends are playing, seeing someone playing, my kids recommend this game, my friends recommend this game, my, the top three reasons to download, seeing someone play. The three reasons to play is relief boredom, time killing and challenge to their friends and family. So then we have the last segment called passive players. They are like 55% of the audience uh, in Android and 45% on Apple Store. The retention rates go 
uh, with the passage of time in terms of passive player, they're like really quickly, uh, they don't come really easily. But once they come, they don't uninstall your game all the time. Growth rates are like really good. The audience range is like 40 to 46 percent. Population is 27 percent around the world in the mobile game industry. They daily play 47 percent of the people in this genre play games daily. And then they have like 56 uh, percent of this audience is like females. They are like really low social, really low passionate about gaming, and they don't really spend the money. The biggest audience is like, you know, UK, then China, and then US. So these are the people who, the old ladies who play Candy Crush, and they love it, and they have like on 800 stage or something like that. Uh, the top way to discovering this, the, the, the way of this game is like top chart, advertising in the game, and op app store optimization. The description, they, they really like the description, they always read it, and you know, they have like screenshots in the game, the game name, these, these are the top three reasons to download the game. They just wanted to play this game because they just wanted to be relaxed, time killing, and relieve their boredom. So the creep principle of user-centric game design, we will talk about this after the players. Uh, so these are the four things, it's, 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 we call it four by four. So these are the three, four things that we, we wanted to have for a game-centric uh, mobile game design. We, we just designed it before we, we design any kind of game. So it's like thinking, designing, targeting, and measuring. So thinking about the players, thinking about their passion, thinking why play the players download this game and their player segmentation. We also, you know, we always try to, you know, work on these things before we get into some game, and that's we get, you know, a lot of rewards. So when, 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 we, when we talk about the targeting, how we target them, so it's like you know, their age group, their gender, region, and their behavior, because we have all the data of all these players, we get uh, you know, our segmentation, targeting audience from here for the user acquisition, and it really helps us a lot to go to any network and you know, get the really, really low CPIs, because we, we actually know which game is going to target where. And then we measure, like we, we, we have to be like really specific about the game. That's the that's a, that very key centric of our game design principle. We influence, we try to influence the game players. Then we wanted to be really, really have to be really on the mark. There we there we don't go on the boredom, and they had, you know it's it's not going to be really too hard. So that's that's the you know how how you measure a good game. And the last thing I want to say that you know the best way to find your game player is the design thinking. So if you, if you develop your design thinking principles in terms of like four by four or user uh, you know, persona, you'll definitely have a lot of things to coming on in, in terms of like you know, your user and you will have a lot of different things with, with the game design. The user persona is a very, a very basic principle of design thinking. So whichever big company is like right now, they are working on the design thinking and they are working on the user persona. So before they develop even a game, they just do a small chart setup. They just you know, get their audience. So let's suppose there is a guy who is John. He works at Starbucks. He just, he, he, his age is like 23 years old. Like really, really specific. He ha he's a blonde guy or you know, you just write everything down, everything about them. So with the one user, you, you actually know what, what, his, what that user know. When he play the game, he just only play the game when he's free. He's just free, when he's, he's free, he's, when he get into the underground, he's free. So we, you just write everything about that fantasy user. So once you have everything about that, you definitely have a lot of thinking that how this player is going to play my game. What is, what is, what, what is the capacity of this player? You know, he, he needs to just you know, kill time. He just needs to be like really, really fun things he wants, what kind of artwork he wants, what kind of you know, genre he wants. So everything like that, you, you complete like really, really first, and you develop game after that. So it helps you. Before you do any user acquisition, you get to know that which people you are going to target. That is the most important. In, 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 in uh, right time of the world, the mobile games is so saturated market, and you know, we, we always looking forward for the user acquisition after we develop the game. So this is, this is the problem with the design thinking you can resolve like, at the very early stage of the game. You have to develop that by yourself. Like, you know, what kind of audience you are looking so it has to be only one guy and then you know when when you do user acquisition there will be a lot tons of people in that one player hey 
Um, assume I already have a game like with uh, thousands of players and now I want to find my personas. Do you have any recommendation like tactically how to find these personas? <coughs> So it's, it's, it's very easy, it can be very doable. So depend on, on, on your games, you, you get you know, a lot of things based on, if, if you have like, I, I'll definitely upload this on a lot of platform, you can see that and you know, what you guys have to do, you have to you know, now understand what player is going to be play your game. Is, is, is it a passive player? Is it you know, a female audience? You, you definitely have a mind, you can, you know, what you can do is like, you, know, you can test a smaller campaign on, with Facebook ads or any other ad network, and you get to know about you know, in which category of the players your games is falling, your games is falling for. And then you can like, really easily understand you know, about your games player, and you, you, you can you know, test all the other networks, and you can tell them you know, this is over, over market, and this is how we want it to you know, let, just, ex, just give you an example. If your games fall in the passive player category, and you have like a lot of, a lot of you know, in-app purchases in your game, then you are definitely in a trouble. You have to make sure that you, know, you in, in terms of in-app purchases, you have to convert a lot of things in terms of rewarded video and everything, then you have a lot of big range to get, you know, maximize profit out of your game. So how you do that? So the type of games you make, uh, what kind of games are they? Are they like hyper casual? How co complex are they? Because so, so from, from zero to 10, we have like different kinds of games. Like, you know, we develop like really simple casual games. Uh, we develop really hardcore games. We also give services to the uh, different game, uh, you know, people like from NFL, Hobbits, Jurassic Park, and Lego, we, they, they come to us and they, they want us to, you know, help us with, to them, you know, yeah, just, find the re real audience. Just asking, because, for instance, like I've worked with Personas before, right? One of the complex, apart from defining them correctly. Okay. I like the link you do to UA, actually, for me, that's the yes, exactly. uh, new thing. Uh, it's like, if you have many Personas, yes. right, you start having conflicting uh, problems. So what's what's the most personas you ever used? You always use only one, and that's the no. Target? Sometimes, sometimes we use we we have to do like twelve personas, fifteen personas. You do. And then at the end we have to find this is the right audience. Ah. We test smaller campaigns, as I said, you know, really really small campaigns to test the audience. If that's working for us, we we just try to make it more. So what we do is sometimes we just you know create a smaller video based on the artwork we are going to do, not a game, a smaller or you know video, so we can say okay. Let's, let's test this video. We just, you know, do a Facebook campaign on that thing. And, you know, we get to know, okay, the people we wanted to target is coming to this ad or something like that. And then we, you know, change our persona according to that. And, you know, we just redo that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, how do you extract the data to understand the player's portraits? Uh, which tools do you use? So what, what we have, we have an in-house tool, which we, which we are like, that is our secret thoughts. And you know, we, we, always, we always think that, you know, if you want it to be like really top on the industry, you have to be like really data-driven. If you see right now, the hyper casual game is not a, it's, it's not something you have to make or you, you have to do like really great artwork, really great game mechanism. It's all about data. You just, you know, Put, put in some numbers if they, they are just working right, so J, the, your games is hit. So that's what we do with all other kinds of you know, uh, things. We, 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 certain, we settle down some uh, key KPIs, like you know, where, we, we, where we get to know that okay, this game is, you know, has this kind of audience, and we just name that audience. We see their behaviors by a lot, a lot of you know, services we use, like Google Analytics, Trends, Keywords Planner, everything. So we get all the data according to that. So. All right, guys, it uh, sounds like we're done. Yeah. Thanks so much. No worries, no worries. Thank you so much. Thank you.